Earl Wilson was a pitching force when the Tigers were at their best in 1968. Earl, you know, you came to the Tigers in 1966 and, and, and played until 70, which meant you were part of that world championship team. But tell me what it was like. What feelings did you have of playing in Tiger Stadium? Because you came from the other great ballpark, Fenway Park, and now you're in Detroit. What did Tiger Stadium mean to you? Well, Tiger Stadium was the first stadium that I made a major league start in. This big, huge building, all green seats, and... And it's funny, it'd make it look like you can reach out and touch the walls. When I was with Boston, I always, when I came to Detroit, this was the first place I ever been that black folks owned something. I had been raised in the South, and I came to Detroit. Uh, I would go down the streets and I'd just see these big, beautiful homes like on Boston Boulevard, something I've never seen before. And I said, wish I could play here, you know. And just fortunately enough, I got traded here. You came here with the Tigers, and you were the first player to ever have an agent, Bob Wolf, and I know that drove Jim Campbell, the general manager, a little crazy. Well, uh, it was the year that I won 22 ball games, and that winter I uh, was talking to Bob, and he just felt that I should get more money than I thought I should get, and I said, well, I don't know how to go about it. So, in turns, he said that uh, he would come in and help me negotiate, and I said, well, Jim Campbell is not going to see you as an agent, and I know that for a fact. He don't even want nobody in the room with you talking. He said, that's all right. So I was living downtown in an apartment, and he said, well, if you run into problems, call me back at the apartment. I go out and tell Campbell that, you know, I've had a tough night and I'm ill, and, but I want to talk about the contract, and every time we would go over some things and it get a little sticky or something, I have to excuse myself. I go outside where he couldn't see me, go down and pay phone, and then I would <laughs> call Bob back at the apartment. And so we finally got it done, but after all these years, Bob Wolf writes a novel, and then he tells about that negotiation. Then I get a phone call. I knew damn well you were not that smart, Wilson. <laughs> a big moment in 1968 for you was? Uh, we came back and with a dedication. I'll never forget a guy, Norm Cash, you know, he, uh, God rest his soul, he said that ain't no way in the hell that we can't win it this year. And, and it just kind of kept going that way. And, and I'll never forget a guy named Eddie Matthews, the Hall of Famer. He was on that ball club and, and somebody wrote on the wall going down the runway, let's win in spite of Mayo Smith. And Eddie Matthews said, I don't know who wrote that on that wall, but it better come down. I, to this day, I don't know who took it down, but it was down. And, but that's the kind of respect he, he, he commanded. And we had some guys, some great veterans on our team. Elroy Face, you had Eddie Matthews, you had uh, K-Line, obviously, and, and Freehand was a leader. Cash was in his way. And, and, you know, you didn't get it out of hand. And, and it was a, a fun group of guys, man, that that we did a little everything. And, uh, uh, but you know, you was kind of out the group if he wasn't performing. You couldn't do what the other guys did, and that, that made it special. 